Welcome back to another episode of The First Team. I am Joe DeLeon. Joining me as always, former NFL and college QB, Matt Sims, also founder of the Sims Complete QB. With us as well, Irish Breakdown recruiting analyst, Ryan Roberts. And today we are breaking down our top performers from week four, guys that had amazing performances and really shined as college football players and also maybe potentially NFL draft prospects. The three guys that we're going to be getting to, Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. We're going to be talking about Bucky Irving from Oregon. And then lastly, Jonah Ellis from Utah. I want to start us off here with Xavier Leggett. These are three guys, by the way, that Ryan suggested. Um, justifiably, good good players. Had pretty good <laughs> weeks. But we're going to go to Matt first uh, because uh, I want to get Ryan as little airtime as possible this week. I'm not <laughs> kidding, of course. Xavier Leggett, though, this past weekend had a crazy, crazy game. Massive, physically dominant receiver. Puts up five receptions for 189 yards, two touchdowns. Had a really nice long reception in this game where he really showed and flashed some of that speed. Matt, what did you get from Leggett? If you had an, a guy like this to throw to, I'm sure that you would have been pretty excited. Uh, we did. I just didn't throw it well enough to actually get them the football. <laughs> but, um, you know, Xavier Leggett, there, there's a lot to be excited and impressed about with his performance. Uh, this is a one play strike capability football player, man, where if you get him the football, he has the ability, the physicality, the speed to be able to break it, you know, for those long explosive touchdowns. And he displayed that on two occasions this last weekend. Uh, the one that I think I was most impressed by was the, the simple vertical go route. The go route, which he wins at the line of scrimmage very easily, right away, you know it. And um, Spencer Rattler actually slightly underthrows it. Mm. And he has to, while in full stride, Turn completely, you know, 180 degrees, reach back, catches the football probably about four feet off the ground, doesn't break stride, and then continues to accelerate past the defender um, on that vertical go route, which to me was just like, wow, you don't really see a lot of guys do things like that. When you typically have to turn back to a football that's underthrown, we see dudes fall over, we see dudes fall and catch it. And the fact that he was able to rotate his body, catch the football on the back hip, then turn and accelerate past the defender that was within striking range of the tackle. Just shows you the explosive nature, the flexibility of this person, and the hand-eye coordination, too, to not break stride. And then the shallow cross over the middle, man. Mm. I mean, he was wide open, and after he caught it, there was no way anyone was getting him. He looked like he was a Formula One race car driver going around the bend 180 miles per hour accelerating. So it was uh, it was fun to watch. I'm sure that it is pronounced le uh, Leggett, but I'm going to pronounce it Leggett because I want to be French. Because I want to be French. It sounds great. Xavier Leggett. Um, Joe, fantastic week, Xavier Leggett. But I really want to put this into a little <laughs> bit more perspective on 189 yards receiving. The 189 yards receiving was more than what Xavier Leggett has had in any single season in his previous four years on campus. He had, what was it, 80 yards receiving in 2019, 113 yards in 2020, 2021 he only had 63 yards on eight catches, and then last year he had 167 yards. So in one football game, he had more yards receiving than he has had in any other season. Now up to 27 receptions for 556 yards and three touchdowns that receiving total just in 2023 in four games is more than he had in his entire career in four years, which is just absolutely mm. insane. A guy that I don't know about you, Joe wasn't on my scouting radar before the season started. I had no idea no. who Xavier Leggett is, but now I'm looking at a six foot three, 227 pound guy who, by the way, they did, you know, the, the GPS tracking stuff that they do all, all the time. Xavier Leggett was also apparently the fastest player that we had seen in college football this past year. Got over 22 miles an hour, almost 23 miles an hour at 6'3", 227 pounds. So you want to talk about a kid that is saving his best for last? You rarely get the fifth-year breakouts, right? But he is putting together a tremendous year. A guy that nobody knew, wasn't on the radar at all. The only wide receiver that you were talking about for South Carolina coming the year was Antoine Juice Wells that used to play at James Madison. Like that was the guy. Well, but and Nicholas Harbor, who hasn't done Harbor, anything yeah. this year, comes in and everyone's, we even spent the time talking about him and they haven't even right. really introduced him 
to the offense. And it's kind of funny that Leggett, Leggett, however we want to pronounce it, Leggett. he's this fifth year guy who's at all these opportunities and now he's he's totally capitalizing on them. Yeah, no, he really is, man. He is taking full advantage of the opportunities that are in front of him. And just again, this is the great thing about college football because nobody had Xavier Leggett on their bingo sheet before the season started to have a breakout. And there we are, man, four games of the season. And I believe he's the leading receiver in all of college football, which is pretty insane to think about. It's it's incredible. <laughs> great story so far. You know, one thing to keep in mind is, you know, why is this guy breaking out the way that he is all of a sudden? Right. I think there's a few, a few key factors in this situation. Mm-hmm. One of them, Dow Loggins, offensive coordinator, a guy that has, you know, maybe is not on the uh, forefront of your brain as far as like offensive minded people or, you know, gurus. But he's an NFL coach. He has NFL experience. He understands what it takes as far as the NFL views it of getting guys open. And if you do it in the NFL, you can usually do it in the college game. It's not always the other way around, right? So being in that environment, Spencer Rattler, second year in this offense now, he is probably one of the most improved football players in the past two years. And and you really can't deny that either. He has steadily gotten better each and every game that he has played in as South Carolina. And this year is another example of it. I really think that he is playing really good football. He played well against Georgia. And, you know, the fact is they lost to a better football team that day, but he did a lot of good things to be impressed about in that game. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys do agree, but I do think that he is a improved football player from where he has been to where he is now. This guy, the coaching, Shane Beamer, what he's been able to do, it's had a huge impact on this young man. And I think it's been able to, you've been able to mm-hmm. see now guys like Xavier Leggett or Legit or Leggett. He's legit. <laughs> oh, I know legit. that. <laughs> he's <laughs> legit. But, yeah. you know, either way, I think all these factors have played in a, a part in why these young men have had great success early this season. Matt, I will give Spencer Rattler credit because I know Joe won't do it, unfortunately. I do believe he's played bad. I was just – wait, wait, wait. I was actually just about to say that, so you uh, shut your mouth. Uh, no. We were supposed to watch him in summer scouting. You're like, it's I'm not watching sh- Spencer Rattler again. Shut your mouth. Uh, I, ch- I actively chose not to because I wanted to watch some other guys, but he has wow. played a lot better. I've heard some people say that he might be the third best in the class. I'm not going to go as that oh, far, but yeah, despite some of the offensive limitations, I think he has really excelled. And maybe Leggett's performance is because he's getting the ball a little bit more effectively. You, you changed it. You changed it. You said Leggett. I like it, man. Good job. <laughs> like it. Like it. <laughs> I will say when you watch him on film, maybe this is kind of an odd comp, but like physically he reminds me and looks and moves similar to A.J. Brown, that kind of physical profile. I'm not saying he's going to be A.J. Brown, but the way that he's physically built, he kind of reminds me of him just watching him play. So you, you, you know who you remind me of? He, uh, no, I don't. I don't hate it. He reminded me because he's just a little bit taller. Do you remember Kevin White when he was at West Virginia? That's what well, I. That's, kind that's of saw a brutal comp to throw out there. Why? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin White was fantastic at West Virginia. What do you he mean? Was. He was terrible comp. He was. It wasn't his fault right. that he got injured every other day of his life. I mean, that's that's true. Part. All right, all right, we're losing track here. Here yes. we go. All right, <laughs> second guy, second guy that we're talking about here, Bucky Irving from Oregon against uh, Colorado. They put on a. Big, big offensive performance. And despite only getting 10 carries, Bucky Irving still finishes with 89 yards rushing, three receptions for 19 yards as well. Small, compact running back. I know he was a guy that, Ryan, you liked in summer scouting. Um, yep. I didn't watch him originally. He wasn't on my short list of guys to watch because there's just so many running backs, it feels like, in this class. But you started to see why his name is going to be brought up a ton in this 2024 NFL draft cycle because he's twitchy, he's flexible, he's one of those guys who, when something's not there, he reverses course, he finds more space. Ryan, what did you get from him when, when you watched him against Colorado? I mean, it, it was it was almost insanity watching him against Colorado because he was just so much better than every defensive player he was going against in the game. And yeah, <laughs> he's a smaller back, to your point, Joe, and he his stat line ended up not being total – you know, totally gaudy, but you also knew that Oregon in the second half caught off the dogs. I mean, they were winning by was it thirty five nothing at halftime, and they ended up winning forty two to six yeah. in this football game. Like this game could have yeah. been much, much worse than a forty two to six final score. But Bucky Irving, I really thought from play one 
was just show what the separation was in talents between Oregon and Colorado. We know that Colorado is an exciting team. They have a very good quarterback. They have some really nice skill position players. But I think that Oregon was able to win so decisively because you saw the depth that they have in comparison to Colorado, but you also saw the physicality they have. And despite him being a smaller back, he gives me Gio Bernard vibes in the sense that Gio Bernard was a smaller back, but like Gio broke a lot of tackles. He had a really low center of gravity. He had really good contact balance. That was Bucky. He was just bouncing off of dudes, running hard, incredibly physical. I thought he was a tone setter in this football game. I'm just happy that we're seeing how good Bucky could be. Because, I, Joe, I don't know if you know this, but Bucky Irving, actually, do you know what college he started out at before he transferred to Oregon? Do you know this? Was it Colorado? No. He was a Where? Minnesota He was a Minnesota Golden Gopher, man, at one point. And now he's a Oregon Duck. And I really love him. You an ide- in... identity difference. Sorry, I don't mean to yes. cut off. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, that's man. Weird. He, could be, he could be getting pounded into the grounds at Minnesota and still being a really good football player. But in Oregon, and Will Stein's offense now with what they started, obviously, last year, this is a very much more space-oriented type of system. They're going to get the ball in space. They're going to ask him to run inside, outside zone, work with the vision, and do great things in the passing game as well. And I think that this is a perfect fit for Bucky Irving out there in Eugene. And I think that we just saw a glimpse of this on a nationally televised game because I think most people know who Bucky Irving is because he ran for 1,000 yards last year. He's a really good football player. But this was a highly anticipated, highly anticipated, excuse me, highly televised game. They wanted to see if Colorado was legit. They wanted to see what the separation was with, between Oregon and Colorado. And I think Bucky Irving was a great exempl- exemplified what the separation right now is between the best teams in the pack and a Colorado team that's improving but still has a long way to go. Yeah, I think environment, coaching staff is really an important thing for a lot of these young football players out there. So when you are going through this process, it really is important to keep in mind just where do you think that your assets are valued the most and where coaches can take advantage of this? Because Bucky Irvin, like you said, it's perfect. It's a perfect match made in heaven. I think Will Stein is going to find more creative ways to get this young man the football. I would love to see this guy get more catches in the screen game because I already know with him running between the hashes in that screen game, he is going to do a lot of damage right against defenses. His short, compact size is unbelievable. I mean, this dude, you know, he's kind of hard to see between the tackles when he hits the line of scrimmage. He is explosive and powerful, and it is unbelievable to see him run through contact the way that he does. You know, and, and it's unbelievable that to know that a guy like him, he is not getting hit very often. He is the one that is delivering the hit at the point of attack. So yep. it's, it's, it's a great physical attribute that he has to an already explosive offense. I can't wait to see him get more catches out of the backfield because I think with space and with just more practice at that stuff with that offense like you're discussing with Will Stein, the sky is the limit for this young man. And this is why it's tough to pay – NFL running backs long-term contracts over a long period of time with a lot of money because you got guys like Bucky Irving and Bijan Robinson coming up each and every year that are mm. so impressive and dynamic, and it's just hard to validate playing uh, paying one player in that position that amount of money because I already know right now there's a lot of NFL scouts that were very similar to all of us here. Didn't know a lot about Bucky after they watched that game. They're going to keep a closer eye on this kid because he is an absolute weapon out of the backfield. Make sure you check out Bet Online for all of your sports betting needs. For anything that I do betting related, I go on over to betonline.ag and I use promo code BELIEVE50. Bet Online has all of the latest updated odds for the NFL and college football seasons. Anything you need, whether it's futures, live in game betting, no matter what. Your football betting needs are met at Bet Online. And again, make sure you use that promo code Believe50, B L E A V 50, to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. 
And and quick shout out to the offensive line. The Oregon offensive line is quietly Ooh. one of the best in college football. It's a really yeah. good offensive line, man. So Great quick point. Shout out. Dude, dude, my guy Johnny Cornelius from Rhode Island, dude. By the way, I, mean, I have he's, to. He's like, we, he's like the fourth best offensive lineman on Oregon. Ooh, stop! 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 <laughs> well, well and he's a really young, good offensive lineman. That's good. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's a he's a young guy. Uh, I think he's a true sophomore junior. or redshirt sophomore, true junior. junior. He is uh, still doing a pretty good job. There was one play he had against Texas. Texas Tech, where I was texting a buddy of mine who's an uh, who's an agent about him, another former Rhode Island football player, Whoa. and there was this one play against Texas Tech. He he just completely drove a guy to the sideline and dumped him. I don't know if you guys know the play that I'm talking about, Ryan. You might have you might have seen it, but a yeah. Johnny Cornelius has been fun to watch. Um, I, I I I once I once. Uh, recommended him to an agent when he was still at Rhode Island, Joe. So yes, we are very familiar with a Johnny Cornelius. Yes, Josh Josh Connerly, the left tackle, is a true sophomore. That's an absolute stud. The Jackson Powers kid, the center, is one of the best in the Pac-12 already, and might be one of the best nationally. The crazy part is, is outside of number seventy-four. I think his last name's Moore. I believe everyone could come back in twenty twenty four if they felt it's crazy. Like it. I think they're all juniors. Yeah, I don't know if that lower, happens. Which is wild. So maybe yeah. Bo Nix will come back too. I mean, get that eighth year. Get that eighth year and get his doctorate. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Um, but to to kind of sum up our thoughts here on on Bucky Irving, I think that you bring up a really good point, Matt, about how a guy like him fits perfectly into next year's draft as like a late day two, early day three guy for a team that's trying to add just an extra weapon and piece to the running back room. That is the way that things in the NFL are trending. We've got less and less teams that are saying we've got a a singular guy that we're going to roll with. The Falcons are an exception and most teams are like the Seattle Seahawks where they've got Zach Charbonnet and Kenneth Walker. You get a different blend of player with Bucky Irving because he's small, he's compact, his body control is fantastic. He's a space killer. I got to also say that Bucky Irving might be one of the best running back names ever. I, I don't know why, I but I think his name is. I wonder what, I, I wonder what it is. But I like it, though. Just, it's, it's a good football name for sure. Yeah, it's it's just a really, really clean, uh, perfect his, his uh, name, running his back name. name. Is, his name is actually Marquise. M-A-R apostrophe K-E-I-S-E. Marquise. It's not as fun. I wonder why where Bucky came from. That's a good question to ask. The last guy that we have, uh, another younger player, Joan Ellis from Utah, who is a true junior listed on Utah's website, maybe there's no, nope. is there no, nope. he's true junior double checking yep. this past week against UCLA. I think he had the best performance out of anybody in college football, finishing with 10 tackles, three and a half sacks and five tack- five tackles for loss. And if you just watched this game, you knew this was a grind you out defensive performance by Utah. They're dealing with some quarterback issues where Nate Johnson has been explosive, but not there as a passer yet because he's a younger player. They need Cam Rising back. It doesn't matter. They're willing to rely on their defense to get after players. And going up against a true freshman and Dante Moore, Jonah Ellis teed off. He was cooking. He is a guy who didn't really stand out before this season, but as he's gotten progressively better, his name is going to pop more and more on these NFL draft radars. Uh, Matt, I want to send it to you first. I know we don't really do a ton of defensive players on this show, but man, that stat line is just, it's just nuts. That stat line is nuts. And, uh, it was a game that I was kind of watching afar and I wasn't really paying attention to who was accumulating all these stats until, uh, we had our discussion. But when I go back and I watch just the plays that he had, it is unbelievable. First, his get off at the line of scrimmage is legit. The other aspect that I love about, too, is that his first move is usually extremely effective and decisive. The guy has a really, really good natural spin move. You see a lot of guys out there that do the spin, and they kind of go nowhere, and they end up facing the tackle that they're trying to spin off of. This guy actually spins with power and with speed, blowing by the tackle on numerous occasions. And then really, like, the final aspect that I think is the most exciting, really, for anyone who's watching him, He collapses the pocket on a lot of these pass rushes. But then as he makes the quarterback move and leave the pocket, his pursuit is unbelievable. He continues to chase after the quarterback and get after it. I know he was labeled with three and a half sacks, but he very could have been close to like five actually in the game. And it really just it's a credit to him and his conditioning because 
it, it really did show as the game mm-hmm. continued to go on how well conditioned this young man is and, and just how how scary he was throughout the game. He's got a tremendous family background, which is really cool that I want to hit on real quick. One, yeah. Joe, he was a three-star recruit out of the state of Idaho coming out, but he was number one player in Idaho coming out. Why was he in Idaho? Well, there's a reason that we can quickly kind of work through here. One, he's at Utah because his father was Luther Ellis, who was a former first round pick defensive tackle, who was a fantastic player. He has now had two different brothers that have played at Idaho. Yeah, I think you remember yes. him, Joe. Christian Ellis, who is yes. now with the, with the Eagles, and Caden Ellis, who is playing with, with the New Orleans Saints. They're both off ball linebackers. And Noah also played at Idaho, the big nose tackle that I think was also on the Eagles at some point. I can't remember, but he was the weird bunch. They're all like little, small athletic kids for the most part. But then they have Noah, who's more like their dad. And he was like 360 pounds at Idaho playing nose, which is just absolutely <laughs> fantastic. So he's had now three players, uh, three brothers, excuse me, that have played in the NFL. His father was a former first round draft pick, a really good player at Utah. And he is a little bit of a funky player. Physically, he's 6'2", 246 pounds playing defensive end, wearing number 83. It just kind of looks a little bit awkward. But (laughs) then you watch him and you're like explosive and you hit on it, Matt. The get off is really nice. He's able to finish plays. Length isn't fantastic, but like his closing speed is really, really Mm. nice. So the Ellis family with the father, their former first round pick and three sons that have already played college football. I mean, I've already played NFL football, excuse me, and major college football. Jonah Ellis, the youngest of the bunch. Looks like he might be the fourth Ellis son to join his father to play NFL football, which is pretty wild to think about and pretty awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Also went to Mo- Moscow, Idaho is where, they, where they're from. So that's pretty fun. Well, well. well Moscow is where the University of Idaho is. It, it, is it, it, wasn't his dad well, a coach his, there? Or his dad was lines? a defensive line coach at one point at Idaho. He was, yes. You're going to be set up for some pretty – miraculous success if one you've got all those brothers that are playing defensive line this isn't a quarterback family this is a defensive line family you know that those guys are beating the crap out of each other on a daily basis when they were growing up and then Uh, it's it's like it's like the the gronkowski family man you ever seen like those videos of them just like wrestling in the backyard all of them are like six five like one dude in all in all seriousness if you have a family of defensive tackles and linebackers and a dad who played in the nfl i can't imagine that the furniture in that house has been you know survived in one piece that that has to be it's a it's a perfect breeding ground for success because you know you're just um you know you're amongst a group of guys that's going to help you get better and i think that the other thing too i feel like you can feel and see that coaching background with a guy like this and it's something that almost doesn't get talked about with defensive linemen where you've got a dad who's a coach you can see that that nuance that attention to detail um the technique all of that stuff shows up for a guy like Ellis and have all of his brothers have been there and have already gotten there. It sets him up because he knows what he needs to do to get to the NFL. And maybe he's got a head start that he ends up at Utah compared to uh, Idaho, which is still a very, very good FCS program. Well, well, he, he, he obviously was the most accomplished in high school out of the brothers because he's the only one that joined his father as university of Utah players, which is pretty cool to watch. But, and, and speaking as a younger brother too, typically you're getting your ass kicked more than everyone else because <laughs> you're younger. So he's definitely tougher and he's learned that despite not being the typical NFL size defensive end technique is a must. And, uh, and I think that really has shown, like Joe said earlier, that his technique is pretty damn flawless for a guy who might not fit like the prototypical length and size of a, of a normal defensive end. Well, Matt, you just need to find – you just figured out early in your life that Chris was a lefty, so he's going to lead with his left, right? So you have to do everything backwards on <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> the, These are the things that need to be broken down and discussed more. The, the, the <laughs> fighting of, of sibling football players is, is something I think needs to be – Uh, analyzed more when we talk about draft prospects i think that's a good note to wrap us up on guys great show as always we're going to be back talking about our week five top performers we'll see who ends up shining this week make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you come back when we do break down more players as we've done so throughout this season at joe de leon at sims complete qb at rise and draft enjoy the rest of your week folks we'll be back toodles